So as you guys might know from my previous video, earlier today, our ducks got attacked by something. I don't exactly know what it is. All I know is that I had several ducks that had bite marks on the back of their head and the back of their neck. And I had one duck that was missing that I eventually found wedged in the back corner of the duck house. The ducks were in really rough shape. My wife Allison and I ended up doing some uh, medical attention to them. We, uh, I say we, it was really more Allison. She, she's a champ, you know. She, she, uh, she used to be a registered nurse and right now she's in the process of studying to become a nurse practitioner. And so when it comes to medical stuff, she's just always on it so much. And she was just awesome because she spent a couple of hours with me taking care of the ducks, examining them, helping clean them out, making sure that we wouldn't get an infection. We sprayed them with some of that blue stuff. And yeah, we, we gave them as much medical attention as we could. And for the dead duck, we even tried to bury it out back in the far, far reaches of our pasture, nearly, I don't know, three quarters of a mile from the actual farm. It was really sad to lose that duck. And in fact, Allison even gave the duck a name. Her name was Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. Later on that afternoon, I really spent a ton of time trying to figure out exactly where the critter got in, how it got in. Um, I eventually discovered a spot that had a little bit of digging and there was some open space. I had noticed it originally when I was first checking on the ducks and I first discovered that they were injured. Um, but uh, after doing some more investigation as well as where the dead duck was left, I'm pretty certain that's how they got in and out. So what I did was I actually spent time putting in new ground staples to make sure that the chicken wire couldn't be pulled up. And then on top of the chicken wire, what I did to be extra safe is I took uh, boards and rocks and cinder blocks and put them all around the perimeter. So it would be really heavy and really hard for any sort of critter to burrow under and get in there. So I'm hoping that those precautions will keep them safe. What I also ended up doing is I uh, put up a couple of trail cameras as well as I said I have a heart trap. I mean, I, I don't really want the, the critter to come back, but if he does, I'll be able to figure out what it is and hopefully catch him and uh, put an end to this nonsense because I, I, I'm just worried for my ducks. You know, I, I've done some work to shore up the duck house, but I'm just not positive that it's gonna be enough. dead ducks. One right here. I think this one's dead back here. Darn it. Whatever it was definitely got in here again last night. Look at her. Ugh. 
And the other ducks just are not looking good at all. They look even more banged up. Oh man, this is awful. Pablo, get away. Pablo, go. Go, go, go. Come on, buddy. You don't want to be here. see up there Pablo I can't help but feel like this is all my fault. I mean, I don't know. I, I tried so hard to keep them safe. They're getting more and more beat up and they're getting picked off one by one. So I don't think it was the skunk that did it. Um, I think that was a mink that was running around. Um, it was too big to be a least weasel. Um, and its ears looked a little different, so I don't think it was a martin. And and we've got water right over there. Like there's a creek right over there. So, I, and I know that they live there. Like my my neighbor Fran from across the way, he's told me stories of years and years of having to deal with minks killing his chickens and eating his chickens and having to kill minks. And and so it seems pretty likely. But I just don't know what to do. I mean, I feel like I blocked off all the major entrances and I don't think he's getting through the actual holes of the chicken wire, so there's still probably some sort of weak spot. It's the second day in a row that we've had to administer first aid to these birds. I guess the good news is as we examine them, only a couple seem to have fresh cuts. Most of them seem to have wounds that are healing pretty well from uh, the previous day's attack. To treat the ducks, we, we basically wash them with uh, some warm soapy water. We use like Dr. Bronner soap. Uh, just to try to clear out any debris or anything that's in there. Um, then we do a rinse with just warm water, no soap. And then we try to dry them off as much as we can. And then we have uh, that blue spray. I forget the name of it, but I'll flash it up here on the screen so you guys can use it if you're ever in a situation where you need to do medical care for ducks. I really am appreciative of Allison. She's been awesome throughout all of this. She uh, has always been concerned about the security of the duck house and I often poo-pooed it. So I got to admit I feel very very guilty about that one. 
but you know when it comes to the duck's medical care she's really jumped in so she's got people medical experience but uh gotta say she's really excelling as she uh steps into the role of uh farm vet here too and uh, I don't know I just feel really appreciative of the fact that I've got you know a wife and partner in all of this who's so able to help and and do some things that I'm just not all that good at <laughs> But now that the ducks are taken care of, I'm gonna turn my attention to figuring out a security system for uh, tonight, because I'm afraid this guy's gonna be back. So right now I feel like I'm in like a police movie, right? And we've just set up this elaborate sting operation to capture the bad guy. Um, what I've done is this, I have moved the ducks out of their duck house. But at the same time, I have sealed up the duck house to make it look like the ducks might actually be in there. On top of that, I have set up two different have a heart traps around the perimeter of the duck house. So I, I actually took one of the dead ducks from this morning and baited it in the have a heart traps. I kind of split it so that I could put one part in one trap and one part in the other. Well, I've also set up the game cameras again. So my hope is that tonight I'm able to snag this guy and keep him from hurting my ducks again. And I'm just gonna keep the ducks in, in the, the chicken tractor for a couple of days just to keep them safe. I just hope I can catch this guy, but I'm uh, really not sure how this is all gonna turn out. 